Let's talk about the unit hydrograph and flood uh, wave routing homework assignment. Here's an Excel spreadsheet that I'll be giving you. And you can use this spreadsheet first for part A of the first problem, the unit hydrograph problem. So I ask you to scale a, a curvilinear SCS unit hydrograph into a hydrograph that um, has units of CFS per inch. And so it's still a unit hydrograph, but we're kind of stretching it out and, and changing the peak based on the input parameters I'm giving you for the watershed. So the inputs are, we have a duration of one hour, we have a time of concentration of two hours, and you need to calculate your time of peak. I'm gonna delete that real quick. Um, and you'll need to input your peak rate factor, which I give you, I'll give you the drainage area, and then you calculate your peak discharge. Um, well, it doesn't have to be too much of a secret. So um, you can put the equations here to calculate this. Um, so this is the value we're running with. Um, we'll just call it 4,600. Okay. So once we have our peak discharge and our time to peak, we can actually scale this hydrograph. Um, so you can see that the units of this curvilinear hydrograph, which I give you, it's just a table, um, and it's just kind of this idealistic shape of hydrograph. And it has the units of Q, per Q peak per inch. And so all that means is that we've divided the discharge at a given time by the peak discharge and it's per inch of rainfall. So that's what makes it a unit hydrograph. And then this time has just been divided by the peak time. And you'll see that at one, that lines up with the peak, right? Okay, so how do we scale this? First, we need to um, kind of undimensional, un non dimensionalize or provide dimensions to the time. And so simply, all we do is we take this T over TP and we multiply it by our time to peak. And a trick here to kind of keep that cell from moving is if you do function F4, um, or you can take those dollar signs in yourself, it will, you can drag that equation and it won't um, move that cell. All right. So I'm gonna just double click on, I just highlighted that cell where I entered the equation. I'm gonna double click on that little box. And then it brings everything down. All right, so now I have real time instead of non-dimensional time. So my hydrograph is eight and a half hours. Now we need to do the same thing for the peak discharge. So I'm gonna take that 0.1 and I'm gonna multiply it by our Q peak. Function of four. And I'm going to do the same thing, just double click in that little box and it populates it down. All right, now I've got a hydrograph. Um, this is the non dimensional hydrograph, so I'm going to tuck that away now. And this is our, um, we'll call it dimensional unit hydrograph. It's still cubic feet per second per inch of rainfall. Now to part B, I give you a hydrograph and I say that in the first hour, um, and remember, this is a one hour duration hydrograph, so <coughs> this, this is going to work out. In the first hour, we have one inch, in the second hour, we have 0.4, and then we have 0.2. So now, what we need to do is scale these hydrographs. Um, I'm just going to bring my time over here, see, and I'm going to paste it as a value. Um, so now I've got my time over here. And for the first hydrograph, um, all I'm doing is I'm taking this value of CFS per inch and I'm multiplying it by our inch, our depth of rainfall. Okay, so because it's one, I get the same thing. Over here, I'm just multiplying it by 0.4. And you'll notice that if I can, I can put in this dollar sign for four, that means um, it's gonna lock it on four on the row but not K, K doesn't have the dollar sign, so it's not gonna lock it on the um, column. So I can drag this equation over. Oh, I didn't lock it over here, sorry guys. We wanna make sure that D9 is locked. I'm gonna lock the column D, but I don't wanna lock the row. All right, so now I get, um, my CFS per inch 
times my actual rainfall depth, and now it's scaled. And then I can highlight these and then double click them, and then it gives those equations all the way down. So super fast, I'm multiplying one times that discharge for that given time. All right, so I've got these three individual hydrographs now. The last part is we have to align everything. And it's not gonna be perfect, um, but all we have to do is we'll copy, and then we'll paste the values, right click, paste values. So that starts at time zero, that's our first hydrograph. Our second hydrograph starts at the first hour. So I'm gonna find that, that's pretty close. I'm not gonna interpolate or anything. So we'll just start it there at the first hour. And then my last hydrograph starts at the second hour. So 2.04, pretty close. There we go. And so over here, I've simply just summed up all those cells. Um, and so I've got the combined hydrograph, which just sums across for each time period the discharges of those three. So I've plotted it here. I've got the first hydrograph, the second hydrograph, the third hydrograph. You'll see how they're staggered in time when they start. And then this yellow one sums everything up. And you'll see that it's aligned and overlaps with that first hydrograph until this second hydrograph kicks in and then it starts to peak up a little bit more. So that's all there is to it. And to um, taking a unit hydrograph and then scaling it and summing it over um, a hydrograph to make kind of a one big composite hydrograph. Now for the Muskingum flood rooting problem. I've taken the liberty to go ahead and paste that hydrograph over here in case you have trouble creating that yourselves. Um, we're gonna use that hydrograph and then root it down a stream. You can take a look at the homework problem. <coughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and jump into how do we solve it. So what I've set up here is, um, and I think I just asked you to do at time, it was one hour. Um, I might ask you for some other times, but um, we have an inflow hydrograph and then we're gonna root it through a five mile reach. And I've given you the parameters for the Muskingum, or the Muskingum equation. And then I give you the equations here. So um, I give you the parameter values, k is equal to three, just double check that. Oh, I say k is equal to two in the homework. So let's update that. k is equal to two. Um, and then we need to now calculate these parameters so that we can solve the equation. And so the Muskingum Cone equation is basically four dash six, um, where you say q2, which is qi plus delta t. This is going to be the q that kind of comes next. Um, in this time step, and so in this case, our time step is one hour. Um, that is a function of the inflow at time two, the inflow at time one, and the, those are multiplied by two coefficients, and then um, the outflow at time one times another coefficient. So to set that up, um, here's my outflow discharge over here and I need to calculate my coefficients. These coefficients aren't gonna change because my delta T isn't changing and my parameters aren't changing. So coefficient zero, I enter this equation in. So I'll just do a, one example. So negative K um, times X do, 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 plus 0 0.5 times my delta T, which is one hour. And then I'm gonna divide everything by D, which I still have to calculate. Divided by D. Oops. All right, it's gonna give you an error there. Let's go ahead and put D in. That's gonna equal to K minus k times x plus 0 0.5 times delta t. All right. So I've just calculated my first coefficient, and then you can do that for the rest of those. Note that they should all sum to one, and so 
just make sure that um, to check yourself that they did that. So once I do that, um, I can now do my muscium cum calculation, or sorry, my muscium calculation. <laughs> and so what this says is that Q at time two, and let me just go ahead and check this. Okay, so we'll assume at um, the initial stages, everything's zero. Um, at the next step in time, we're going to now um, put our equation in, and so that would be um, C zero or C naught times my inflow at time two, right here. Plus C one times my inflow at time one. Plus C two times my outflow at time one. All right, and now we have to make sure we lock the appropriate cells here. All the coefficients should not move. So we'll just put dollar signs there for all of our each coefficient, each column coefficient. And then we wanna make sure that as we drag this equation down, uh, we're kind of marching forward through the hydrograph. So I, um, one and two will then kind of shift to this next two and then o, Q, sorry, Q um, or outlet one will shift down one cell. All right. So I went ahead and put some values in here for these coefficients just so we have a working equation. And then I can populate that equation all the way down. And you'll notice that as I go down, um, we're still calling those coefficients and then we're kind of working through this hydrograph to calculate the next one. So you'll see that um, this plot then shows what the hydrograph looks like at that delta t is equal to one hour. And that's essentially what we're trying to do here. Something to keep in mind is um, there's kind of different things to think about in terms of time. Delta t is the time step. Um, we observe a flood wave at one point, and then what happens um, an hour from now to that flood wave? So it's moved downstream, and that's what we're seeing here in this orange graph. Now, the kind of I1 and I2, Q1 and Q2, or these should actually should be O's, um, inlet and outlet values, those are happening um, in terms of the hydrograph itself. And so this is time one or, or um, inflow one, inflow two, et cetera. So those are um, a different time that we're kind of working with. It can be a little confusing, but um, hopefully that made sense.